Good morning, everyone. Am I close enough? There we go. Welcome to First Church and to worship here today. We're so glad that we can gather in this way and in this place to celebrate, to be together in community. And hopefully some of you arrived early so you could also have pancakes um, before the service today. So thank you to Gil and Fernie, who I think are probably still cleaning up uh, for that gift for us this morning. A special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us today. We're so glad that you are here and that you could join us in worship. We do have a small bag welcome. We do have a bag um, that Becky's coming around with, and it's just a welcome bag with a few things in it. So if you'd like one, you can put your hand really low so no one can see that you're a visitor. And she'll come around and find you. We know that it is a difficult choice to find a church and to come and to be in a place, and so we hope that you feel welcome in this place, and if you have any questions to ask any of us. We'd love for you to check in, for those of you who are virtually, to check in online and say good morning to one another, and Adam's already waving at you. That's lovely. And those of you who are here, if we don't have your information and you'd love uh, just for me to give you a quick email and say thanks for coming, you can leave your information on the clipboards at either of the doors or for visitors on the card that is on the bag that you will receive. Special, uh, a special, special someone here today who no one can go and ask uh, any questions of because it's hairdresser client privileges. And so he knows everything. So that visitor you can't ask any questions of today. Welcome, Gary. So good to have you here. <laughs> um, today is also Memorial Day weekend. We know that some people are away for Memorial Day weekend. We want to honor those who have served and also those that are affected um, by the violence and the results of serving in war. And we recognize that too in terms of post-traumatic stress syndrome that often happens to people who have served in that capacity. And so we think of veterans today um, on Memorial Day weekend. We have a special um, a couple of announcements this morning. One is that um, many of you know that Arnie Korioth um, died recently. His memorial service will be on Saturday the 11th at 2 o'clock. The family has requested that it also be live streamed. So people who are distant or who can't be in person are able to see the service also. It'll be here in the sanctuary. There is a prayer vigil today um, organized by Arizona Faith Network. And it is a Zoom uh, presentation. We sent it out this morning to um, the way you get e-communication. So if you'd like to join that, you can register for that today. We have a new offering from the McDaniel family, which is the next one. We have Sunday Supper Club three times during the summer at their house. Bring a dish or dessert to share and just come and enjoy fellowship with people from First Church. So we thank the McDaniel family for opening their home to us. And we hope you'll mark those three times on your calendar and join us. There's a new book coming study for those of you available on Thursdays in the morning from 10 to 11.30. We're going to read this book, and even if you don't join us, you may want to read the book, Do I Stay Christian? Sounds like a great First Church topic. And the, the Thursday morning group chose the book. And then we move next week to a new series um, about the Holy Spirit as next Sunday we celebrate Pentecost. I'll remind you again at the end of the service, but we hope that you'll wear red next week. And Reverend Doug Bland is going to lead us while I go and celebrate my mother's 80th birthday. And I'm sure she's watching online right now, so I will be with her for her birthday. So we have one more really special opportunity this morning. Melanie, if you'd like to come forward, we're going to honor our graduates um, this morning who are with us. Thank you, Melanie. Yes, if you just pick it up and start, you can, away you go. It's on. Is that better? So, uh, we wanted to honor the graduates here in the congregation, and we wanted to start 
with Haven. Is she not in here yet? Uh-oh. I saw them outside. Okay. Well, let me tell you, Haven was given a gift of two gold and satin pillowcases to, rec to stand for Sabbath, Sabbath rest. And then the others are getting gift cards to Bed Bath & Beyond, and they could get the same pillowcases or whatever it is they want to get. And we just want to recognize hard work, accomplishment, um, bright futures, um, people accomplishing things in spite of the pandemic, and let them know that their congregation is proud of them and supporting them. So we'll get back to Haven. And is, do you pronounce it Jabez? Jabez here? Come on up. Hi, Jabez. I'm graduating from uh, ASU Prep Digital. Sorry. There were a couple of us who mentioned that we had never celebrated our own graduations. And so Pastor Susan asked me to mention that here. So actually, I mean, Dr. Cowrie relates it to like childhood and, and trauma. And I'm sure that's true. But anyway, so I'm here to mention that I did get a Bachelor of Arts degree when I was 31 years old in 1974, sociology and psychology, and a master's degree in social work in 1979, um, at ages, age 31 and 36, respectively. So I also just wanted to encourage anyone who's getting degrees in later life to just do it because it's well worth it. And uh, that's really all I have to say. Thank you. And Dr. Carey would say, celebrate you. <laughs> and we celebrate you. Charlie, oh. Oh. are you ready? Yeah. Right, we're doing a formal uh, ceremony now. Yeah, we're ready for mm -hmm. Haven. Just a minute, Melanie. Marilyn Collins. I told everybody we got you two satin gold pillowcases for Sabbath rest. Okay, so you've done a lot of work and you need to make sure that you rest as well. And your church family is so proud of you and so excited for all that you're going to do. We celebrate you. Okay, and the last one, I know this last name. <laughs> it's for Micah Valaket. Yes. And Susan's going to come tell us what Micah's up to. Um, Micah graduated with a bachelor's in physics and is already transferred to the University of Washington, pursuing a master's in mechanical engineering. So let us pray. 
Gracious God, we come to you today in celebration. Celebration of all of the accomplishments of all of your children. Celebration of our ability to be there for one another, to support each other, to see the potential in all of your children and help them to realize it. We celebrate them, we celebrate you. We celebrate you for being the ground and the love that supports us, that gives us our creativity, our imagination, and our passion for justice. And we also are mindful of all of the anxieties around education and safety at this time. We ask that you bring forth new leaders who will help us create a just and safe world for all of your children. Amen. You can just put it down, thanks. Let us stand together to sing and worship. We miss you. We're so glad when you can be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let us join together in our call to community responsibly. Come home to a place of love, belonging, and acceptance. We are welcome here. Bring your joys, sorrows, and disappointments. You are welcome here. Express your authentic self and agency to create change. Together, we are called to exercise our superpowers and stand for justice, peace, and love. In God, we find our courage and our strength to act.
the scripture reading you're going to hear in a little while comes directly, this song, from that scripture reading in Nehemiah of where indeed our strength comes from. Let us be about the work of transformation together as we confess. We seek clarity, O God, not because we have managed to see clearly or been true in all things, not because we have succeeded in loving, not because we long to be true. We desire to love as we have been loved and to see you as you see. Renew our inner sight, make fresh our longings to be true, and grant us the grace of loving that we live as we intend. You may be seated. Our scripture readings this morning, Jordan and Thea. Good morning. A reading from Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 9 through 12. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and, the, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the levities who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. So the levities still all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and send portions and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. The word of the Lord. Habang nakikinig ang mga tao sa sinasabi ng kautusan, ay umiiyak sila. Sinabi sa kanila ni Nehemias na gobernador, Ezra na pari at tagapagturo ng kautusan at ng mga levite na nagpapaliwanag sa kanila ng kautusan. Ang araw na ito ay banal sa Panginoon na inyong Diyos. Kaya huwag kayong umiyak. Sinabi pa ni Nehemias, magdiwang kayo, kumain ng masasarap na pagkain at uminom ng masasarap na inumin. Bigyan niyo ang mga walang pagkain dahil ang araw na ito ay banal sa Panginoon. At huwag kayong mabalisa dahil ang kagalakang ibinigay ng Panginoon ay magpapatatag sa inyo. Sinabi rin ng mga levita, tumahimi kayo, huwag kayong mabalisa, sapagkat banal ang araw na ito. Kaya umuwi ang lahat ng tao para kumain at uminom at magbigay ng pagkain sa iba. Nagdiwang sila ng may lubos na kagalakan dahil naunawaan nila ang mga minsahe ng Diyos na binasa sa kanila. As we come to this place, we come with joy, with singing, with rejoicing, but we also come with heavy hearts from the week that has passed. And so here we're invited to lay our burdens down. Let us stand in body or spirit to sing.
Charlie. <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing the, the joy in a song like that when you're actually letting go of something. And it speaks so directly to the scripture and the message and our superpower today. And it makes also a transition into the beginning of the, the hard conversation and the heartache of this week. The suffering and the violence inflicted upon children, it leaves us all brokenhearted and depleted in our own spirits, hopeless, powerless, grieved, and pain-stricken. 19 children, for God's sake. Two teachers and a teacher's husband who died of a heart attack over the grief of losing his wife. As the psalmist cries, O oh Lord, how long? Jane reminded me of this week, and I always listen to Jane. She said, you need we need to be saying this again. Do you remember when you said that, Susan? Of the Messiah warrior greeting that we should be asking ourselves right now. Kassirian in Gira. And how are the children? The traditional response is all the children are well. Meaning, of course, that peace and safety prevail that the priorities of protecting the young and the powerless are in place. That Messiah society has not forgotten its reason for being, its proper functions and its responsibilities. It means that the daily struggles for existence do not prevent caring for the children. How are our children? They are not well. Our children are scared and anxious. Their human rights are no longer guaranteed from voter suppression to censoring the truth about white supremacy history, to denying them their authentic gender, to the falsehood of replacement theory, and the hypocrisy of condemning, condemning the Russian assault against the Ukraine democracy when our own democracy is allowed to be assaulted. How are our children? Our children are not well. Mental illness diagnosis is on a very sharp increase. What does their future look like today as we celebrate people with graduation degrees? Will the environment sustain their lives? And how can we leave them in this mess to clean up? How are our children? They're not well, all of them. What's the background story of an 18-year-old child who planned and calculated a mass shooting of third and fourth grade children? Our hearts grieve, our hearts break. In this moment, I recalled a quote from Parker Palmer that reminds us that we have a choice. We can break down and become cynics, or we can break open our hearts. I'm not going to yield to cynicism. Love is what happens when we allow suffering to break our hearts open. The response to the violence by elected leaders and massacres has been to defend the rights to bear arms without any further restrictions that we know could save lives. The response is to blame those who responded to the crisis and to blame the lack of access to mental health care. Those all might be true in some form, but blame is simply a form of scapegoating and ignoring culpability, responsibility, and accountability. But when we break open, we choose compassion that creates change. God, break our hearts open for compassion. Break us open to be these agents of change that we've been talking about. 
Today is the last in the series of super people, agents of change. It's easy for us to lose hope and to feel powerless. It's easy to feel there's nothing that we can do. The present circumstances make it challenging for us to even see goodness and to allow ourselves to experience joy and to say yes to what is still the abundant gift of life. We don't need a superhero to save the day because we are called, equipped, and empowered as super people, agents of change. Our hearts break open and we're called to justice and to act in love with perseverance. Each Sunday, we have in witness the incredible work of different organizations in our community who are transforming lives, standing for justice, providing hospitality, and creating change. And our youth who stood to speak truth. We are reminded that while there is much that demands us to stand against, there's so much to stand for. So underlying everything that is external around us is an internal depth of spirit and soul. Underlying everything that is external and pressing in on us is an external internal power and connection and our access to the divine and divine feminine, if you like. Underlying everything is this internal knowing that God is. God is love, God is good, and God is on the side of the marginalized. We draw our strength then from that internal spirit, that source of life that is greater than our current circumstances or any breaking news. Break our hearts open to the abundance of life, the essential goodness of all, and that deep abiding joy that Nehemiah spoke of in the scripture. The scripture reading this morning from Nehemiah reminds us of that rootedness of our strength. Nehemiah writes, during the crisis of the sixth and seventh century, when Israel defines itself during the invasions of the Assyrians and the Babylonians. And this text offers people an experience of reminding them of who they are as they hear the first five books, the Torah and scripture being read to them. The reading itself, it embodies the character of Israel, the nation, for as the text says, the people understood it. What does the text utter? Something so surprising. The joy of God is your strength. And it reminds them of who they are. Where does strength come from? We don't always think of it about it as being rooted in joy in God. We think about strength sometimes as being, being physically fit, we're strong. We think about this kind of strength as being courage or being really brave, and some people using it for bad, and they are using their strength and their bullying, or they use their money or their power, or we come from a place of fear, or we come from a place of privilege or whiteness or anger. Nehemiah says, strength comes from the joy of God. It's one of our superpowers, is joy. Joy found internally and its roots in God. Where happiness is found externally, sometimes from just the things or experiences or brief fleeting moments, happiness is not what we're about. It's joy that comes from God and from within. Joy can't be manufactured. It's a deep and abiding knowing that we draw from and draw upon. And joy is a choice. 
It's a superpower. And so while there is heaviness in our lives and all around, there's still joy. While there are a multitude of reasons to grieve, there is still joy. When I hear the horrific news of children being massacred, I don't know what to do. I feel heavy in my spirit. I feel heart broken because the children are not well. We know that the way things are now are not the way that things could be. We know that underneath the hatred and the name calling and the pointing of fingers, the righteous platitudes, the deep polarity, the anger, the morality police, and fear, there is joy. God offers us goodness, abundance, and joy, full to overflowing. One disclaimer that I think is really important here is that if you are in a place of depression, it's not accessible easily during that time. Take care of yourself in the midst of these world traumas. And I encourage you to spend time doing and experiencing what brings you joy. You need it. We need it right now. From the Sacred Earth Common Ground storytelling event on Wednesday that Doug invited us to, in that particular event, we were all invited to tell a story of when we felt deeply connected to God and to ourselves and to one another and the earth. And as the stories were shared, there was this tangible joy in the air of remembering. What brings you joy? Do that and more of it. Our hearts break open for justice and compassion. Through this sermon series, it's been joy to hear the stories of the organizations that counter the injustice and violence. You know how the sermon ends every week. I'm seeing a lot of super people right now. And one of your superpowers is joy. Hopefully through this series, you have been thinking about your own superpower. And I've invited several people to share their superpowers today. But it's open mic. So if you want to come and shout out your superpower, come join the line up front. And you can see Jody's the start. So come on up and share your superpower this morning. Come form a nice line. Okay, Kitty, I'm coming to you. <laughs> Thank you. I promised her I'd come to her seat. Give me just a minute. The rest of you can start coming. Okay. My superpowers? The good fortune in becoming a member of First Church. Through this experience, I have involved in causes that I support learned new, wear, new ones, and had my life enriched. In addition, I have a wonderful church family that are there for me. Even during a long pandemic isolation, I was not alone. First Church kept me in the loop, provided online services, classes, and contacts, and ways to serve. Thank you, Kitty. I have an illustration here. <laughs> I work at the Beatitudes campus, and on our name badges, we had to pick a Beatitude, and mine is be positive. And I chose that before the pandemic, and let me tell you, the pandemic really tested it. <laughs> and I had to have friends remind me. <laughs> I had to have church family remind me that that's my superpower. But when I'm at my best, I'm able to take situations where 
someone is, is feeling down or resisting or feeling scared and, and somehow find the positive and reframe things and uh, teach and, and encourage. Thank you. Carol. Um, my superpower is my approachability and ability to rapidly learn to help people take action and change. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Jody. Lisa, come on up. I'm a good so I would just say a little bit more about being a grandma being a superpower. Um, because actually the superpower is that God has gifted me with an deep, abiding love for children. Um, and most of my careers have involved helping children. Um, at one time, I was a counselor in a junior high school. And I told every kid who came into my office, you can call me grandma if you'd like. Because everybody needs a grandma at school. Um, and as a grandma, I have never um, felt guilty or second-guessed my, uh, my inclinations because there was something about being one generation removed from those children that helped me to see them, to not see me in them, but to just see them. So if you're not a grandparent, um, Find a relationship in your life where you can be a grandparent, because it is the best. I didn't really think about this. We've been doing this series, and Susan had said something about sharing your superpower, and I wasn't really sure what my superpower was or is. And then I realized that this week I celebrate my 40th year as a social worker. And peace, love, social work. And for those of you who don't know, social work is all about social justice and change within individuals, the community, and the world at large. And as many of you know, I, I work in the prisons, and I see people every day that have done horrific things, but I also see people who have made some internal changes. And I guess that's my superpower, is that I believe people can change. Um. My superpowers actually started out as weaknesses. Um, when I was in school, I dealt with a lot of um, disabilities and learning, especially dyslexia. Didn't wasn't a functional reader until I was like fifth grade. Um, and now I'm a therapist working with kids with disabilities, and so I try to relate my own experiences to them and try to give them hope. And now I'm also a spoken word poet and a lyricist in a band, and so. I have taken that dyslexia and, and surpassed that, and, and now I try to, so I have the, in my work, where I work with the kids with disabilities and try to encourage them, and then when I'm out of work, I'm doing poetry and art and trying to build art community. Um, so I've kind of reversed both of those weaknesses and turned them into my superpowers. Woo! Hi, I'm Thea. I'm Chris's other <laughs> And I teach in a local high school. I teach math, and my superpower is uh, bringing the data analysis and giving the kids visuals on their emotions, colors on their emotions, and whether they're angry or happy, when does this happen, so that they would be able to understand more theirs, themselves. And if they are able to understand more themselves, they're going to love themselves better and it doesn't resort to mental health. So before it goes to those mental anxiety, mental conditions, we can, as teacher, we can stop it if we give them tools to understand themselves better. And my superpower is being in that space and being able to share that. Thank you. <laughs> Children, close your ears. Susan asked me to share my superpower, and it's really simple compared to everybody else's. I get shit done. <laughs> she does indeed. 
I hope that you will think about your superpower even if you didn't have an opportunity to speak. And after the service, when we celebrate with cake and the graduates, if you haven't had enough sugar and pancakes yet and carbohydrates, um, there is more to come that you'll share with one another. Just to ask somebody else, what is your superpower if they didn't share today and be ready with yours too because they're gonna ask you. We are agents of change. We believe that we are equipped in that way. We continue to use our superpowers to create change. We believe that change is going to come one day. Remain seated. Let this music and these lyrics wash over and fill you with joy. There's an old friend that I once heard say something that touched my heart, and it began this way. I was born by the river in a little tent. And just like that river, I've been running ever since. He said it's been a long, 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 long time coming. But I know change is going to come. He said it's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die. I might not be if I knew it was up there. He said it's been a long, long time coming, but I know change is going to come. I went, I went to my brother, I asked him, brother, Brother, could you help me, please? He said, good sister, I'd like to, but I'm not able. When I looked around, I was right back down, down on my bed and knees. Yes, I was, yeah. change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know the change is yet to come. Oh, yes, it will.
It feels like that's the prayer today, that a change is going to come. Let us join responsively in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Creator who art in heaven, who always stands with the poor, abandoned, sick, and forgotten, hallowed be thy name. That reminds us that you are God, revered and holy. Thy kingdom come, that all will be well and every manner of being will be well. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As co-creators with you in justice and peace, give us this day our daily bread, that each person in the world may have food, clean water and air, health and safe education, and wellness and dignity of soul. And forgive us our debts, that we might not be indifferent toward our neighbor, our racism, our sexism, our selfishness, as we forgive our debtors. Help us to forgive those who victimize us, mellow our spirits so we see the divine in all. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil and from one systemic stru- and from systemic structures and powers that perpetuate evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You're invited to come and light candles today. There's two in the front and one in the back to add your prayers today and to lay your burdens down. Welcome, Shane. Thanks for coming to join us today from the Southwest Center. Thank you for having me. It's so great to meet you. Thank you. This one's for you. I don't know if I'll need it. I talk pretty loud already. The live stream audience wants they to hear you. Okay. Yeah, they'll definitely need it today. So, yes, uh, it needs to be on. I think it's over there. Are we there? Oh. Perfect. You got it. So. Um, we have had a, a, somebody from the community, as you heard, each Sunday, and you're the grand finale. You're the uh, last one big today. Shoes to <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> uh, many people may not know about the Southwest Center, um, and so we would love to learn about the Southwest Center, 
um, and what it does, and then later talk about how we're connected to you. Definitely. So my name's Shane Barrera. I'm the HIV and STI prevention team manager at the Southwest Center. Um, the Southwest Center is, oh, I have so many good things to say about it. I love where I work. Um, really, our mission is we just provide affirming and inclusive services to promote the well-being and advance health equity for diverse communities and those who are seeking compassionate care, especially people of color, LGBTQIS2S+, and queer individuals, and those who are affected by HIV. Our vision is very simple. We envision a just and equitable world where who, where, who we are is embraced in all spaces, especially in barrier-free access to health and wellness, leading each of us to live a full, rich, and authentic life. How do you get all those amazing things? Oh you just show up? <laughs> so many things, yes, you can just show up. So really, I have some amazing talking points here <laughs> put together by my marketing team so I didn't have to do much research, no. <laughs> so just like you guys, we are a very all-inclusive, all-are-welcomed agency, whether you're straight, gay, whatever your identity is, we accept you. Um, we are proud to offer care and resources to a diverse array of communities, people of color, LGBTQ+, and those impacted by HIV through education, prevention, and treatment. Um, the Southwest Center offers many, many resources to our clients. We offer um, primary care, free HIV, STI testing and treatment, mental health services, gender affirming care, nutrition services, medical case management, PrEP and PEP navigation, community and outreach programs, and honestly, so much more. We have support groups, we have clothing drives, we have food drive, it, so much stuff we offer. That's really, really incredible. And I know that there's a connection um, with Southwest Center currently yes. with um, First Church and Joshua Tree. So maybe you wanna just Yeah, so sure the connection knows. that we have is with our GAP program, our gender affirming program. Um, they work with Joshua Tree and have a clothing boutique here. Um, so every second and fourth Wednesday from I think 5.30 to 7, the gender affirming program will provide access to free groceries and clothing, thanks to our incredible partnership with you all and Joshua Tree. Um, I've been, I went to the grand opening and it was amazing, had a really good time. I think it's super important that we have those resources for our community. Um, I can honestly talk all day about Southwest Center, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we are so grateful for what you do, what you provide, um, and learning a little bit more about it. And um, the last thing is to give you a, the caping ceremony. <laughs> um, and it's yours to keep, of oh, course. Thank so thank you. I, I don't know. I, don't, I have a big are, neck, so good luck. I, um, I, I'm going to. Hang Perfect. It. I'm Perfect. gonna hang it on your hat. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Instead, for having so me. I so appreciate much, it. Thanks. I have brochures, and if anyone wants to talk about the center afterwards, I'm more than happy to do thank that. Thank you so, so much. So hang around and have a chat with Shane too in the Southwest Center while you're having cake. There are brochures like at, at both of the doors um, going out if you can't stay, and then you have some with you. So thank you so much, thank Shane, you. for what you do. Bless you. <laughs> We are uh, so grateful the way that we can be agents of change uh, in the community and also partnering with those who are active and within our own church, the places that we support um, financially. And so your tithes and offerings are received and welcomed today in the sanctuary in baskets on Givelify or the way that some of you write a check or set up your bank, um, First Church is a payee. Thank you for all the ways that you give. Thank you, greeters.
Name that too. <laughs> we had great easy listening music today. Thank you so much. Thank you both. So we need to go out and enjoy today. In the last song, um, the word literally means rejoice. So we go out today carrying that deep inner joy that we all have access to through God. Let us stand in body or spirit to sing. myself so when I go Jabalani Jabalani Africa you repeat that so let's practice it just a little bit break it down just a little bit Jabalani Jabalani Africa okay that's like 10 percent of you so just just do it one more time here we go Jabalani Jabalani Africa Okay, and then you gotta clap at the same time. Can you do it? I think you can do it. Okay, now let's go from the top.
Let us depart together in God's presence. The peace of God in your heart, the grace of God in your words, the love of God in your hands, the joy of God be in your soul and in the song that your life sings. The worship has ended. Let the service begin. Amen. Thank you.